Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, today I have my friend, Amy Rogers, here with me, and we're going to talk about unity through humility. But Amy's joined me so many times on the podcast, and I've read her bio, but I'm going to let her share a little bit about herself with you in her own words, instead of me reading this formal thing, because Amy's really my friend. She's part of my tribe. We're ministry. We partner in ministry together. Uh, so we just have been doing a lot of stuff. And so Amy, why don't you just share with everybody who you are, if they haven't had the opportunity to get to listen to one of our podcasts before. Sure. Um, really, I'm just kind of that down to earth person that the Lord said, I want you to do this with your life. And um, I'm like, what ministry? I don't want to do that. But, you know, when you let God just kind of take over, it becomes really fun. And um, and what he's just kind of called me into is that ministry. And that's what the na name of my ministry is, is raw and real ministries is just I'm very raw and very real. And that's that was my negotiation with God. If you know, if it's not you, then I don't want it. Um, and so that's just really been the journey, just real life with a biblical perspective. And, you know, I just kind of bring everybody along on my journey. Um, I'm married, been married for almost 24 years. I've got four kids and um, just live in life and, and stepping forward each day with what God wants me to do. Um, sometimes it's just being quiet. Sometimes it's doing ministry stuff, you know, and I do the quotes because I am I'm the firm believer that our lives are our ministry. It doesn't require a microphone, a stage, a pulpit, or a church. It's just how we live our life and our day-to-day -day stuff. And so that's really, in a nutshell, um, just kind of who I am and what I'm doing. And I absolutely love that about you is that you are raw, you are real, you're authentic. And that's the way I love to live too. And so that's, I think why we fit so together, um, so well together and partner in ministry so well, because those are kind of some of our high priorities of being authentic, transparent, raw, and real. And um, of course, tempered with love, but that means we're going to have real conversations and we're just going to say, here it is. And we're not going to try to hide behind anything. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining me today. I um, actually, I, you know, for all of you, I did last week's podcast was on unity because the Lord um, has been telling me that we need, like we get these words for the year, right? You heard from God. You released a word for 2023 that said, you'll see me in 2023. I released one that says cling to me in 2023. And um, sometimes those get released at the beginning of the year and there's this frenzy and everybody's like, oh, what is everybody saying? What is everybody hearing prophetically? Blah, blah, blah. And then we just go about our life. It's kind of like those um, at the beginning of the year, you know, when we set those, you know, things that we don't like to <clears throat> label. Um, that that we're going to do this or we're going to accomplish this. I like to call them goals, um, but some people call them other things. I don't like to use that word, so we're not going to use that word um, because I usually never follow through with them. And the Lord's like, you need to go back and you need to revisit the word for the year that I gave you. And you need to keep it in front of you because all too often myself and others included, I think we do feed on those at the beginning of the year, maybe into February. And then we pretty much put them on a shelf and we discount them. And the Lord's like, if you'll keep this in front of you, you, it will actually help guide you as you're walking throughout this year. So I was like, okay, so I've been going through and breaking down on the podcast, each one of those things. So I've talked about a whole bunch of stuff more recently was unity was last week. And now we're going to talk about unity and faith. And in your word too, you actually talked about Amy, um, a piece about unity, but it was just a small piece and it's just a small piece in the cling to me in 2023 too. But the Lord is not letting me let go of that. And I've talked about holy fear and reverence of the Lord. I've talking about trusting him. I'm talking about, um, you know, he's our anchor. We hope, um, he's the anchor for our hope. So I've talked about a lot of stuff. But now we're going to talk about unity through humility. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I can hear everybody now go, oh. 
they had to bring in the humility piece. So I'm going to read this. Um, this is my little bit about the unity. Then I'm going to read your piece about the unity. And then we'll just kind of jump in there because I know you've been studying about unity and humility. And I have as well, too, so that we can have a good conversation about this. Um, but it was about the fourth or fifth paragraph into the word that I released. This says that for too long, there's been much division and disunity and that this is supposed to be a season of increase that we have to let go of our hurts, your rights and your plans. And as you do, he's going to release his healing. And then it goes into this whole thing. But he was really camping on that piece of that. There's been much division and disunity. And then when I go over to your word, because I had you on the podcast. So everybody that if you haven't heard Amy's word for the year for 2023, it's in 2023, you will see me, God, not me, you'll see God, um, that she actually had this piece about unity as well. So you can go back to the beginning of the year because she was in January. Um, but you were really talking about uh, this tipping point and the changing of the guards. And in the third paragraph, second or third paragraph, it just says this, this guard has been brought to the front, walking side by side with each other in unity. They're walking in unity with the kingdom of heaven and all of the heavenly hosts. As I sent them to assist you, um, you're not going to know their titles, but you're going to know them by their fruit. And I was like, so interesting about God talking to us about the church understanding understanding and getting this concept of unity because he wants us to be of one heart, one mind and, and really coming together in unity. And when I was preparing for this, I was like, okay, well, what are we going to title this? Cause last week was be in unity before it's like unity, be of one heart. And he's like unity through humility. Hmm. So I'm going to let you start. What has God been speaking to you, Amy, about unity um, through humility? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think with the humi- uh, with the unity, it's really um, we have to have a desire for it, right? And and we also have to acknowledge our personal responsibility in it, individually and corporately. Um, you know, and I think if we're going to be doing this in humility, it can't come in this prideful finger pointing. And I think that there's been this. Uh, somewhat like an autoimmune disorder going on within the corporate church where it's just, you know, everybody's striving and fighting for this, that, or the other, which I call earthly titles and earthly stages. They're not unified in a, in a heavenly stance or unified in the earthly kingdom. And I think when we do that, it brings disunity and disorder to the things that God is wanting to bring into order. And so I think that is the first key. And that's that personal responsibility. Of, okay. What is within me that is dis- unified with what God is saying right now in this moment of time, just in my life, my own personal healing. How can I become individually um, more unified with what God is saying about me so that I can then be more unified and healed in the unity of the body of Christ, because the body needs to be healed, healthy and whole so that it can walk as one bride. Right. And so, you know, it's just um, I think on the front end of this, it's really our personal responsibility um, because I've caught myself as I've continued to put the word of the Lord before me, right? Because like you were saying at the beginning of the year, we get it all this hype at the beginning of the year, but God's like, I need you to revisit this because even though we got it at the beginning of the year and it was like, ha ha, right? Like we got it, but there's layers to it that he's been peeling back on each word. And that's again, on our personal responsibility. And so I think we, we do this. And in that, um, there's just this, um, peaceful place that he's bringing us to in order to step into that. Right. And, um, and with that personal responsibility, it removes, you know, like, like I've noticed pride in myself. Um, and, and it wasn't, um, like an arrogant haughty pride that I noticed. It was a thought process that, was in was uh cloaked it was pride cloaked in entitlement that's the right way i want to say it it was an entitlement thought that i had and it caught me you know thankfully but it was just that other layer that was being revealed as i'm putting the word of the lord in front of me he's peeling back another layer of my personal responsibility to you know to get healed so i don't have entitlement 
as I'm stepping into the things that God has for me. And that keeps humility in check and pride outside the door. That's really good. I like that. And thank you for being real. Um, let me just say, we all have pride in ourselves that, that comes up at the oddest times. Yeah. Lately, mine has been frustration that leads to anger that can lead to bitterness if you don't take care of it. Um, frustrated that somebody's not getting it or they're not understanding it or whatever. And so it's like the slippery slope. It's like with pride, when pride first begins to poke its head up, we got to take it out right then. When frustration or anger comes, we got to take care of that right then, because those are the things that are going to divide us as the body of Christ instead of unify us. Um, so I want to read, um, there's a couple of scriptures for those of you that want to dive in a little bit more to this um, unity through humility. And so you can Ephesians four, two through six, Philippians two, one through four. But I also want to read this one out of John 15, five, which is Jesus is the vine and the branches, but I'm going to read it from the passion translation. Um, and I know I've always encouraged everybody, don't just read it in the normal translation that you're used to reading it in, because we get so familiar, I think, with it. Like right now, my favorite uh, Bible version right now is The Voice. I've been camped in The Voice for several years, um, but I do also love to bring in um, the Passion Translation. And this verse, particularly in John 15, 5, just really stood out to me because it it was different than what I was used to. I'm trying to look it up and <clears throat> cause I had my thing in a different um, place. So um, I'm an NIV girl all the way. There's an argument in our house about that too. Cause Sean likes the ESV version. Um, but it says in John 15, five in the NIV, it says this, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Okay. So here it is though, in the passion translation. And I was like, ha ha, um, I am the spouting vine and you are my branches as you live in unity with me or union with me as your source fruitfulness will stream from you but when you live separate from me you are powerless and then of course it goes on to this and when i was reading that the union i put unity in there even though it said union just like i did right there because the lord was like i want you to catch this right that I'm the vine and you're the branches. And I think sometimes we think, oh yeah, we're that, that grafted piece that's still trying to mold into the vine and the branch, right? But in reality, if he's the vine and we're the branches, when you look at a tree, you can't tell where one begins and where one ends. And, and instead, I think we're living in the, well, we're grafted in part. And so you can see, oh, they cut it here. They jammed this piece in there and that's my life. And that it's not actually coming together in union. There's still like this, it's trying to, it's trying to be forced to be part of the one. And that's not what God is saying in John 15. He's saying, you've already come together in union, in perfect unity with me. And so we need to begin to think about this because we need to model the life of Christ. We need to be, the church needs to be unified. The church is not unified. We have factions, we have denominations, we argue amongst ourselves. And, you know, when I was growing up, there was a song that we would sing. And I, and I said this last week on the podcast, you know, they'll know we're Christians by our love. That is not what we're known by now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I just like this and this humility piece. That's what Ephesians four, two through six talks about. And also Philippians two, one through four, which I'm sure we'll get to there at some point. Um, but Amy, just kind of some thoughts about this, like living in union, living in unity with Christ and how the world um, is supposed to see this. I wrote this down that um, unity is essential for us as Christ followers, as believers. It's, it's an important for us gr to grow in Christ. And so it's essential, but it's also essential for us to live as witnesses of the church in the world. So we have to put away our selfish desires. We have to put away vain conceit. That's from Philippians 2. We have to take on Christ's character, which was humility. Yeah. Well, and I think, um, 
I think humility really ties into our identity. And, um, and when we understand that, then it becomes kind of this second nature for us to just be humble, right? Like if somebody was a, a tightwad before and then they meet Jesus and they go through the healing process, suddenly they're the most benevolent person you've ever seen. And there's a humility in there that comes, right? And, you know, like my journey, I dealt with, you know, just crippling humiliation, just past stuff, right? But when I allowed the Lord to work on me and remind me of my identity, he took all that humiliation and he turned it into humility. You know, I was a very prideful person. I was a very arrogant person, but he turned it into humility in that process. And, you know, we've been kind of talking a little bit about this um, off camera and just the whole bringing us back to the basics. And, and the Lord gave me this revelation. I'm, I don't know if that it's fresh for anybody else. It was fresh for me, but um, you know, it was back to the garden, you know, back to actually back to creation, not really back to the garden, but back to creation where he spoke everything into existence except man with man he formed us with his hands and he breathed his breath into us there was something more purposed and more tangible with our creation than with the rest of creation and i think when we understand that part of how we were grafted and created in his image like what you were saying when we see ourselves that way there's this whole world that just kind of opens up and our perspective changes and that humility becomes our fuel and how we walk right you know like i don't judge other denominations because they have something that i don't have you know i look at it in a way of what can i learn from them instead of me acting like i've got the corner market on jesus because i'm part of the charismaniacs you know it's not that way and i think when we operate in our identity the humility comes and I believe that humility and honor hold hands and honor is a big deal to God. And, and you see this and how Jesus interacts with every single person as he walked this earth, he honored everybody. He didn't judge. He didn't, you know, go into fights with anybody. The only people that he really battled with were the, were the religious people, you know, so there's the religious within us, right? That the humility is trying to remove. And that is why God, I think is really hovering over this topic because he needs us. I mean, he's coming back for a bride, a unified, pure, spotless bride. And so this is a very deep topic and it's not just this surfacey word that we just kind of throw out there you know it's a it's a conscious decision of i will work for unity whatever it takes i'm going to work for it you know in um first peter uh chapter 2 verse 17 it was just kind of a, a verse that dropped into my spirit it says show proper respect to everyone love the brotherhood of believers fear god honor the king and I think the fear and reverence of God, it's all in tandem, right? The fear of God, his holiness, unity, humility, honor, it's all like enmeshed. And I think if we're in discord with any of those things, then there's something within us and our perspective, our identity or healing that needs to come into place so that we can then walk in that pure uh, unity and honor that's required of us in this hour. Yeah, that's really good. I really like that. And, and because I've also talked about the fear of the Lord and that, that we don't actually walk in that. And I think maybe we should have a conversation about that too. Definitely. I podcast, Amy, cause I'd love to have you back on. Um, because I did talk about about three or four weeks ago, the piece where the Lord was talking about, about how we, we cry out for, um, these Isaiah six moments, right. But we don't really understand what we're asking for because when those things happen, one, we become come undone because Holy Spirit shows up and he says, now deal with your stuff. And what I've watched in church is that people, that's where the enemy comes in to cause discord and disunity is when the Holy Spirit shows up and then he's ready to start dealing with people's hearts and their whatever that they don't want to let go of their selfishness or their pride or their ambition or the, their pain. 
their victimness, their victimhood, right? That they want to hold on to that because it feels so painful to try to deal with it. But Holy Spirit says, let's get rid of this stuff. Let's get you healed and whole because I want to actually bring you to a place of healing and wholeness so that you can walk in the increase that I have for you because we can't steward it well. We can't steward it well. And so the enemy will come in at those moments of, of, times when the Holy Spirit has come to set the stage for us to come together in unity, to come together, to get healed. And he'll come in and he'll stick his foot in the door and he'll see what sticks in people's lives. And that's where I've watched church splits happen because it's like, oh, they were having these amazing moves of God. And then all of a sudden discord and disunity come in. And, you know, I think back to when um, John and I were leading in a church, that was one of the things too. Everybody's crying out for these, oh, we want God to show up. We want this to happen and it starts to happen. But when Holy Spirit shows up, he exposes your stuff. And when he exposes your stuff, if you're not willing to deal with it, then all of a sudden there's this angst and your old ways begin to come out. And so that's when that has that disunity um, has this opportunity to kind of reside there and then try to make the it's the gap even bigger. And it's just like, you have to be intentional about going about it. You have to be intentional about saying, no, I'm choosing connection. I'm choosing unity. I'm laying down my selfish ambition. I'm laying down my pride. I'm laying down in humility and allowing the Lord to do. And then what was in, in, um, uh, and in second Peter that you read, it was like an honor, the King and honor. And, and you said honor and humility, hold hands. I think that's really important too, because the church actually doesn't really know what it means to honor no no and i think i think what we've seen is what was god breathed then man comes in and we try to build a tent around it and we have this opportunistic spirit that comes in and then in that is that entitlement that pride that man-made stage building and not you know, and then it just diminishes what God intended to do. And it's a pride thing, right? So where pride is humility can't be, you know, and, and it's just this thing that, you know, the Lord gave me, he's like, unity won't grow or thrive in disunity and dishonor. It won't grow like god can't do anything where pride is residing and you know pride will it stunts the growth um it grows envy it grows entitlement um it feeds on brokenness right so if we if we need to understand how pride functions you know like i shared earlier i noticed in this new level that the lord's kind of taking me in it's a deeper dive with him another layer of my healing was revealed he brought to my attention that i was having some entitlement in my thinking that's pride well if i held on to that it's because like oh i've been doing this for this long and i should be here and i should be known and blah, blah, blah you know it's entitlement and that will stunt the very thing that he wants to grow me in it has nothing to do with earthly things it has nothing to do with anything outside of my time with the lord and so in that so it will feed on any brokenness so i had to get that thing healed i'm like all right lord thank you for bringing that to my attention let's deal with that thing because i don't want it there i want to grow i want to expand and and that way you know it will also distort the vision Right. If God's giving you a vision, a prophetic word, a dream of what he's having you step into, if pride and entitlement, dishonor, disunity, any of those are cloaking any of that, it will uh, stunt the vision and it will distort it. Yeah. It will distort what God gave you. And this is where we're kind of seeing, you know, the church. But the, a lot of the, the words that the Lord has been giving me to share is talking about this very thing. What once was God breathed, man has come in and we've built a stage. We've built a lifestyle over what was once God breathed and now it's mixture. And God is dealing very harshly with these things, these man-made pyramid things, you know, like we have, we have elevated man and not what God's wanting to do. And so that is pride and that is not unity. And our unity really is rooted in 
heavenly places, not in earthly manifestations. And I think that's a perspective shift that we need to have. And then again, we have to pursue passionately that desire on our own level and in a corporate level to bring that unity, that humility and that honor back to what God really wants, that heavenly order um, to disrupt what we have in order here on earth. I think that's really good too. And I, I want to, um, because you talked about pyramid. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go there because um, Ephesians four, I said, people should look up um, two through six, but if you go down and it talks about that, he's given some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Right. Um, and, and then we quote that a lot. And verse 12 is to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the son and become mature attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So here's something that, that we have built pyramid structures within businesses, like, right. The person at the top, everything starts at the top and it comes down. We've modeled our churches that way. And in reality, if you look at what God is saying, he's called, and there's other places in scriptures when he said that, that he's called the apostles and prophets to be the foundation. The foundation is not at the top of the pyramid is at the bottom of the pyramid pyramid and everything's built on that mm-hmm. right and and jesus said look i've come to serve yeah I've come to serve and to save, right? I've come to show you in humility how the least of these will become the greatest of these. And he did that by washing the disciples' feet. He did that by coming together and they're like, no, 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 you can't do that. He's like, if you don't let me do this, you can't be part of the kingdom of God. And he set this upside down kingdom for what they were thinking because they were used to the pyramid system. And we have to break out of that because that's, I think, what's holding some of us back from understanding the unity is that we have to have this foundation of the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, right? And instead in the church, we've had it, we've, we flipped it upside down and there's people who are like, well, I'm apostle. So you should, yeah, we'll be building a foundation for them to build upon. Right. Not, not dictating to them what's supposed to come. And so we have to understand that. I think we've misunderstood what the Bible is saying. I think that even when you go back to in the same passage of scripture, it talks about um, that we have to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. And we need to understand that, that we're one body. There's one spirit. We are supposed to be the bride of Christ. And I don't see the church being anywhere ready that we've reached unity in the faith, that we're ready for Christ to come back for a bride. And there's so many people that are like, like, oh, we're living in the end days. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not unified. So Christ is definitely not coming back yet. So let's get this together. Let's figure this out because we have to come together in unity. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for a bride who is unified, a bride that can lay down her selfish ambition, a bride who can lay down um, her own desires, her own pride, her own, I deserve this and say, what is heaven doing? And, you know, we're getting ready. Like the, the political cycle is already starting and we don't even vote for a whole nother year and a half. And mm-hmm. and that's where I see division come in so much within the church and the body of Christ, and let alone in relationships outside of the church too. We need to understand this unity piece from a biblical perspective, not from an earthly perspective. Yeah, we're, we're completely disunified, like you're saying, in the perspective because we forget that we're dual citizens. We are residents of heaven, but we live here on this earth. And like Jesus prayed, you know, Lord, your will be done here on earth as it already is in heaven. And that's where we're supposed to function from. It's not a political spirit. You know, I mean, there are things that we are called to rule and reign over here in this earth. And we're not going to step into that authority until we actually are unified with what God is saying. I mean, he's, I mean, everybody's called to different mountains. You and I have talked about this a bazillion times. And, and so there, but there's a balance that has to be there. You can't be unified if you're out of balance. Right. And, and so there's a balance that is in every single one of the calls on every single one of our lives, but that balance is where it, 
you'll see it when we're unified, you know, and I think we have gotten so caught up that the, the church looks more like the earth than the earth looking like the church. Yeah. We have had it backwards and twisted for a millennia, right? It's not just on our generation. This is, you know, a thousand years of just religion and, you know, all of this striving and man-made stuff and the infiltrating and the and the mixture of things right and and we have to remember that god measures our ability to lead by our willingness to serve mm -hmm. see leadership to god is service here on earth and if we aren't willing to wash the toilets and and wash the feet and to feed the the destitute we have no business being in a place of of leadership and sitting there being a dictator that is not kingdom kingdom is not dictator kingdom is not gathering followers and and um and a fan club to support your lifestyle it's not and and there are so many that i have come across and this is just things that the Lord has shown me in the spirit, people are unwilling to let go of their earthly comforts. And yet they idolize the Acts church. Well, if you really read the Acts church, what we're given in the scriptures is that these people were selling their land, they're selling their homes. They literally like were walking with Jesus with no possessions whatsoever. And yet the church was helping each other. They were giving beds to sleep on when they traveled into the town. They fed them, they clothed them, they gave them whatever they needed. The church was unified and taking care of each other. And it wasn't about earthly comforts. It was about getting the word of the Lord out there. And, and I just think that, you know, we, we have to flip the script and really see, I mean, the Lord does not want us impoverished and destitute okay so don't hear me wrong there but but our emotional and mental attachments to the physical things in this earth that are ruling and reigning above and beyond what the lord is asking us to step into i think that brings disunity that messes up our perspective of where we are supposed to be residing and how we're supposed to be functioning and until we get that you know we're not going to be those um, upper room people, you know, they were unified in that room in the unknown. They were there in obedience. They didn't know what was coming. They didn't know how long it was going to happen. They, I mean, I'm sure they expected a man to walk in because yeah. Jesus said, I'm going to send a helper. Okay. Well, that's a guy. Okay. So who's this guy going to be, you know, but they went there and it was a small portion of the people that he said this to It was a very small percentage that went to that upper room, but they were unified. And when they were unified, look what happened. Mm -hmm. It was massive. It, ch it changed nations. Those, dis those disciples became apostles in that moment in time. And the way they walked, like I look at Peter specifically, how Peter walked from the upper room out was completely different than how he walked beforehand. And I think that's that perspective shift that he had in that moment, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit that just changed everything. And that I think is really where God is focusing us in you know how to be unified in spirit and in truth foregoing all of the the chaos and the things of this earth it's not that we don't have these things and reside in them and he's our provider for that but is it our focus or are we focusing on the things that he's speaking to us and having us to you know speak to and that's how we lead that's so good. I was thinking about, I was thinking when you just said that, you know, I took the flashback when Jesus sent them out two by two uh, and he said, I'm going to send you out two by two. You basically have each other. Don't take anything with you. No food, no drink, no place, no money, no provisions, nothing. Right. And it was the same thing. One, he needed them to be unified as they went out two by two and totally dependent and relied on God. Mm -hmm. And, and can you just, can you just imagine that? And then he's like, look, if you get to a town and they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and go to the next one. And I can be like, 
You want me to go with no food and you want me to hope that somebody's going to feed me. You don't want me to even take a bedroll or a tent and you want to do this. Why? Because he was trying to teach them humility from the very beginning um, of coming together in unity of what it meant that they had to trust and solely rely on their father in heaven for every need that they needed. And that's what it means to be grafted in. That's what it means to be one heart one mind unified laying aside our selfish desires and our wants and our wishes to really further the gospel of the kingdom and and that's where we need to understand god needs us to come together in unity so what is our part what is he asking each one of us to do amy's part and my part they're different but they're similar right we do need to be unified And I think we have these moments of unity, but I think then our own, our own beliefs, because, you know, we hold on to those because Amy, you're right. We are not supposed to be of this world. We live in and from a kingdom perspective, a heavenly kingdom perspective. That's where we're supposed to be. That's where we're citizens of. And yes, we live in this world, but we have to have that kingdom mindset that comes from our father. And when you begin to see this disunity and this discord coming up in the body of Christ, it's because we're holding on and we're digging in our feet and we're saying, no, It's my way or the highway and you're wrong. And we get assaulted or offended and we feel like we have to defend God in some way in reality when we just need to let God defend himself and we need to go low in humility and say, I want to be unified above all else. I want to serve. I want to listen to the father. And so God, what is it that you're needing to change in me? Yeah. Well, and I think where we have fallen short, all of us have done it, right? Is that we choose to disunify in the midst of a disagreement. And I think we can continue to operate in unity, even when we disagree with certain things, right? And this is that that cancel culture that's gotten very toxic. I, I honestly am convinced that the church started cancel culture before the world did, you know, in, in one way or another. Um, but I think we also have to just like, I can agree to disagree with people. I love disagreements in conversations because a, it challenges me to think outside of my boxes. I'm learning something, but that's that humility that I've allowed the Lord to work in me so that I can step into places to have a broader understanding. It doesn't mean that I'm going to agree with that perspective, but willingness to step into a a conversation that I disagree in will bring a, a, a fresher revelation of that person's perspective. And then somehow, some way God works in a way to unify that very thing. It doesn't mean I'm affirming certain things. It doesn't mean that I'm agreeing to it. I'm just, I'm choosing to unify myself in the fullness of what God's having me called into so that he can work through me as his vessel to bring his word to people that most people wouldn't want to speak to. And, you know, and I think about that as one thing. And then I also think about the, the, um, the disunity of um, our obedience, our our lack of obedience will disunify us. The, when you were talking, the story of Ananias and Sapphira came into perspective. I mean, they were given instructions, right? And and Ananias and Sapphira were obedient at the beginning of that instruction, but then they were like, eh, "I don't think I can give it all," right? Like, so I'm just gonna kind of tuck a little way here, and and it cost them their lives. And and I know that's really drastic, but I really think that we are in a moment of time. And this is why God is having us talk about this, that we're, that we're in an Ananias and Sapphira moment. Are we going to be unified with our obedience and what God is asking us to do, i.e. having hard conversations, being unified in the midst of disagreement, not choosing to be cancel culture oriented, right? And are we going to be obedient and giving away the things that God is asking us to give away? How many times have we read the story of Abraham and Isaac? Isaac was Abraham's most precious promise. And yet he was willing to lay that down on the altar. 
He didn't do it because he knew about the the ram in the thicket. He did it out of obedience. He wasn't like Ananias and Sapphira later down the road, you know, and it's that moment of time that I think the Lord's really bringing his remnant to of what are you clinging on to in the world or are you clinging on to me? And I really think that that goes with what you, your word was at the beginning of the year, Debbie, are you clinging to me or are you clinging to things of this earth? And when we do that, we'll know where and what we are unified with. That's so good. That's so good. And I, and I think that God gives us opportunities, right? Like like I'm going back to, you know, he sends them out two by two. And then you look at the book of acts, right? Like they had to do this of, yeah, I can go out and I can preach the good news and I can, I can be sent forth and, and be apostles without anything else than trusting and obeying God for the next meal for the next place I'm going to lay my head for protection, for security, for safety, for furthering the gospel. And so when they came into the book of acts that we look at as, Oh, we're the Acts church. We want to live like this. We want to walk like this, which yes, we should be right. But I think sometimes, sometimes we romanticize that book, like what you said, right? Like, yeah, read it. Um, they were being persecuted. They were being killed. Uh, they didn't have a lot, but what they did have was their ability to obey God and stay unified in the midst of it. And, uh, they spoke truth and love. And I think that God d- is doing that for us. He's bringing the church back to this moment of I've taught you, I've spoken to you, I modeled to you, I imparted to you what it means to be unified, what it means to be of one heart, one mind. I've given you scriptures that talks about your one body with many parts. Stop cutting off your parts. You need all of the parts. Like figure out how to work together because I'm coming back for a bride that is not dismembered. Exactly. And right now, we're kind of dismembered right now. We've, what did you, what, what, it, how, how did you phrase that at the beginning? Um, an autoimmune disease that we have an autoimmune disease. Yeah. Because I think that, I think that that's where the church is now. And I think she's been there for a little while. And I think that we missed what God was wanting to do with this reset with inside of the church. And there's a remnant that get it. And then there's still a whole group of people that are like, well, we're just going to keep doing church as usual. And we're not getting down to the foundation piece of what God is calling us to do. Come back to the main thing. Come back to the heart of the father. Come back to the foundational principles of being unified with him. Because the reality of the fact is, is that there is a world outside the doors of the church that will never come into the church, but they are watching you. They are watching you as an individual. They are watching you as a member of the body of Christ. They are watching you as a believer. And they're saying, I don't know how they're different than I am. What's so different than this? They should be able to tell that we're different. They should be able to say, oh, look, they can set aside their own desires and their own wishes and their own wants, and they can lay it down for the good of the whole. Um, When you were talking about, um, like about how that's the thing that we don't have, right. That we want to hold on to our ways. And, um, it reminds me of the submitted committed, and connected. We can lay down our own things that say, look, I'm willing to lay down my preferences for this. I don't agree with you, but I'm going to come back to the word of God. What does the word of God say? I'm going to come back to the principles in the word of God and I can be submitted one to another with you, even though I disagree with you. It shouldn't cause division because when we allow it to cause division and disunity, the enemy wins. He gets to set up a camp and he gets to set up a place where there is a a divide that he gets to keep coming back in and poking at. And we need to stop that. We need to seal up the breaches in the wall, if you will, um, so that the enemy can't come in and taunt us because we are disunified. We have to come together in unity. So Amy, any last thoughts or final words before we sign off today's podcast? Um, I think, you know, when we understand like what you were saying, you know, with the enemy that he has to operate in a legal way. And when we allow or break the law, you know, in certain things, um, then it gives him access, like you were saying. And so I think, you know, really, 
we really need to be aware of our own weaknesses, humility to understand that, humility to see it, humility brings um, revelation and and sight to things. And, um, you know, we don't have to admit all of these things out in public or anything like that. Um, but it is between the Lord, you know, you and the Lord and, and how to, um, really walk through things. You know, there was something the Lord gave me, um, and it it was just this little phrase that said, the church is not operating or walking in the authority that we are commissioned to walk in. Right. And it's because the authority that's commissioned to us is cultivated through relationship right and that relationship brings a revealing and a revelation of god's love his love births honor and honor is the gateway for heaven to pour forth its manifestations through the sons and daughters of god and i think when we operate and function that way then we become that light on a hill and whether you want to admit it or not i mean let's just be really real like it's chaotic out in that world right and and we are coming up to a point um where it's going to be worse than it is now and the most staunch unbelievers are going to be looking to us as the church how do we stand out and how do we bring them in it's not grabbing our Bibles and beating them up over the head. It's going to be in our humility to listen to their pain, our humility to sit at that table and feast with them, and the love of God that's going to come in, not affirm them in their sin, but to love them out of it. And it requires humility to sit at those tables with the ones that want to scream in your face. And I just think that this is that point where we're in. We don't have to be disunified if we are in disagreement. I think that was really the thing that stood out to me. The Holy Spirit popped out of my mouth. We don't, we don't have to agree to be unified. Yeah. And, and it is, it is so important. Like the definition I looked, you know, I looked it up for humility, right? It is a modest or low view of one's import own importance is humbleness. But another definition is freedom from pride or arrogance, the quality or state of being humble, accepted the honor with humility. Like think about what you just said that I, I think it's so true, Amy. And I think, I think we all have some soul searching and some heart searching that we need to allow the Holy spirit to do within us. Because the reality of the fact is, is, is that we all have some pride and arrogance to some degree, right? But we have to allow Holy spirit to come in and we have to obey what God is asking us to do above other things. And sometimes that means going low in humility so that it can bring about the greater good of unity. Um, you also talk about Amy and I almost forgot to say this because our workshop on the Metron has been fully recorded that and um, what started as a two hour workshop is now full three hours we've recorded it you guys can go download it you can still get the all in access pass but you can work through it at your own pace and so it's on uh, debbiekitterman.com slash shop so you can go check that out if you have heard any of our podcasts where we've talked about the Metron and your sphere of influence and knowing what your lane is this is important and and amy you alluded to that a little bit too because that's really how we become unified is not when we're looking to the right or the left of what somebody else is doing and allowing this um pride or ambition or whatever that icky other stuff is you know the jealousy and envy and all that stuff to come up but really understanding god has a specific call and task for you as a member of his body and so if you can stay in your lane and work together and function as a whole we're actually coming together in unity and we can actually do something and progress and move forward in the kingdom of god here on this earth so um you can check that out um but amy i'm going to ask you to uh just kind of pray for us and then if there's anything that holy spirit gives you you know you always have permission to release that but um just kind of in this because because the council culture is so prevalent because we're going into a political season and the lord has been talking to both of us about being unified as the body of christ i just want you just to kind of you know declare or a prayer or whatever god puts on your heart as we end today's episode absolutely um yeah i mean just taking what you just said we have to choose 
to be people of of humility in unity, but also to choose to not be people that are easily offended. We cannot take hands with that spirit of offense because there's a lot of stuff out there that is offensive, but you don't have to take that on. And so I just really felt like I needed to release that over you to not become an offended person that you speak in love and in truth to those things. Like we are all called to, you know, to tear down and to uproot, but we are also called to partner with God to build and to plant. And that is how we become the remnant. That is how we are the ecclesia in this hour. We are the he, Jesus used the word Ecclesia for a very specific purpose. That was a Roman governmental word. So that was really like earth shattering that he would say that in that scripture. Of course, I'm losing the address at the moment, but my Ecclesia, right? We are to be a governing voice. You know, the spirits of religion and the world have told the church to shut up and sit down. You don't belong in this arena. And I'm sorry, they were wrong. And what the Lord is showing us now is we are to be a voice of reason, a voice of solution. We are not going to be people that who are easily offended, but we are going to go on the offense and say, this is what the solution is. Cause God's going to be giving many of you dreams and visions that are blueprints that are going to be solutions on all of these mountains of influence, whether that's education, family, government, finance. What are the other ones? I'm just losing uh, arts and entertainment. Um, there's two more, isn't there? Yeah. There's seven mountains. Yes. Oh, I just lost what did you do the church mountain? I don't know. No, the the mountain of religion and whatever the other one is, I can't remember. <laughs> but all of us are being called to each of those. And it's not what W and I have noticed is not just one mountain per person, right? It's there's all these different sectors and sometimes they're blended and and so I just really felt like there's that um, acknowledgement of your identity and who God has called you to be. And when you have that and that humility that just it gets ingrained into every cell of your body, you do not become an, uh, an offensive person, but one of action. And that is really what the Lord is calling us into in this moment of time. And when we walk in humility and love, and we just put our hands to the plow, that we begin to step into the very things that God has for us that enact change. And that is what we are here to do, to create heaven here on this earth. And in unity so that Jesus can come and set his foot down and be the finishing touch to the very things that we've been doing and building here on this earth. So roll up your rapture rugs and get to work. That's really good. You know, when you were, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about the inner workings of gears and how they fit together and each part has to do their part or it gets stuck and they're, it doesn't continue to move and flow and then it's not functioning. Right. So if you can't get the concept of the body working together and being dismembered, like think about the mechanics of, you know, the, the gears needing to turn to actually make something function and move forward. They all have to be in sync and they fit perfectly within each other to move forward. So Amy, thank you for that. Thank you for releasing that. I really appreciate that. Well, it's my prayer and Amy's prayer that we get this, that we understand that what it really means to be of one heart, one mind, one spirit, one walking together in unity to bring heaven to earth, to walk in the principles of the kingdom and laying aside in, you know, humility, like our own selfish desires, our own pride, our own arrogance, whatever it is, Holy Spirit, come and burn that up in me. Um, so thank you, Amy, for joining me today. I appreciate that. My honor. <laughs> thank you guys for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. If you've been blessed by it, this at L in any way, we ask that you do a couple things, share, 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 get this out so that we can spread the love. And also if you can like, or subscribe us and leave us a review, we would love and honor, be honored if you would do that. And, um, we just thank you for listening today. I'm Debbie Kitterman. Have a blessed week. We look forward to seeing you next week on another episode until then God bless and goodbye. Cause there's peace in my presence
call like that. 